year. Hello and welcome, everyone, to another bonus edition of the main event, Mark's Podcast, brought to you by the Unhinged Sports Network. I'm your first host, lifelong wrestling fan, former radio guy, and cat dad, Troy. And with me, as always, is the WWE Walking Wrestling Encyclopedia and the main event collector. He is the big main to my medium-sized main. He is Greg. What's up, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> the bad guy, Razor Ramon, and Big Daddy Cool Diesel. Fur, fur. <laughs> I'm so glad you got that. I was going to slap you if you didn't. That was, oh, dude, that's one of my favorite things a rock ever did. And I know that's a crowded field, but <laughs> good lord. When he did that, I, I love that like, he could take such, yeah, like when he takes such small shots that are like small, but like very effective, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Great stuff. I, I laughed yeah. so hard at that whole segment. If anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, go look it up on YouTube. No way stuff. out. Is it No Way Out 2002 or is it the Raw after? It's either it's one of those two. It was. It was. It must have been the Raw after, yeah, because okay. uh, that was the one where, if anybody doesn't know, like uh, the NWO had just debuted. They're in the back, and uh, they're like they introduce themselves to the Rock and get pictures with them, whatever. Talking about, oh, and I think Hogan said something about, oh, my kid loves you or whatever. And then, like, as he's walking away, yeah, (laughs) and as he walks away, uh, they say something, they say some crack about the rock, whatever, insulting him. And he comes back and just lays into every single one of them. It is fantastic. (sighs) But, man, this is a good week on the podcast, by the way. (laughs) Hell, yeah. It's a good week on the podcast. We have, uh, well, we're covering a lot of ground uh this week you know going from 2001 from the invasion pay-per-view to uh well talk about diesel in the year 1995 and we had a request in the past some people are maybe like well why are you doing this well we had a request in the past for a timepiece if you will or more timepieces you know so we're trying it on we're going to talk about diesel's 1995 because when we brought up timepieces uh, I asked Greg, like, well, what do you want to do? You know, do, can you think of any? I came up with a couple. He came up with a couple, and this was the first one he mentioned. And, and I want to say why real quick. Because you're right. Because we knock 1995 so much, and I'm not being a hypocrite and going back on it, but I do remember genuinely, be, genuinely being excited to watch Monday Night Raw in 1995. And – I know looking back on it, it sucked, but at the time I was I loved it. And I loved Diesel and I was like was he really a bad champion like everyone seems to think? I don't think he was. I'm and not gonna get into I'm not gonna get into the drawing crap because that's none of my I don't have the financials, I don't know any of that. I'm talking about just what I saw on T V. So Well and I realize, you know, you there is a case to be made for the guy on top draws the crowds or whatever, but at the same time the business was evolving. It wasn't like in you know, because they say, well, sometimes Hogan was the only, you know, top guy on a card full of, you know, like curtain jerkers and mid carters, whatever. It's like, yeah, but back in the day, that was it. Like there wasn't that was kind of like what everybody did. The undercard was just that the undercard and the main events, what anybody gave a crap about, kind of like boxing well, cards. The whole thing about um, Bruno San Martino selling out the garden went like 100 times. There's uh-huh. a reason for that, because people were there to see him and everyone else was just there yeah and it was back to then too i mean and every (laughs) once in a while you'd have another match on the card that people cared about one or two but for the most part you know the guy that was on the poster was the top guy and they kept trying to do that with diesel they clearly were steering into diesel from and i know brett was the champion before this and you know whatever but for the most part wwf and vince mcmahon as a whole had their idea of what they wanted the top guy to be and God dang it, Diesel was it. Look at him. I remember watching Royal Rumble 1994, and when Diesel was out there beating everyone up and throwing them out as they came in, go back and listen to it. This is when he was still a heel. He was yep. – like people were cheering the hell out of it, and he was supposed to be the bad guy. So, so don't yep. tell me they forced him down anyone's throat because people accepted him way before it even happened. And we're talking almost a year. I mean he won the title in November, and this was in January. So don't tell me people didn't accept him. Well, I, not to jump, not to get off topic, but the same thing with Roman Reigns. Royal Rumble uh, 2014, they were chanting his name for him to win. Well, and then all of a sudden we. Well, you're 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 stealing you're stealing where I was going to go with it. It's like you know uh, he reminds me that that what you just ran down reminds me of another long black haired guy with a goatee. 
and they tattoos. They showed them down our throats, but yet at the in Philadelphia, you know, that's not was it Philly? No, I was no. Doing it. But it was yeah. before that when Batista won. Um, they were chanting his name heavily, and they wanted him to win. And he was, the and then, and, and yeah, and then we got him to win. And he won. I don't want it anymore. Yeah, it's like, like oh, well, now God. we we screamed and cried for it. Now that you gave it to us, we don't want it anymore. We want what? we want now we want Daniel Bryan. Last yeah, year you, we wanted Roman. That was your turn. That was your chance with us. Yeah, you didn't give it to us the way we wanted it. Okay, damn it. Look, we want our pitchfork, but we want it with the spit. <laughs> Title that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> basically. Uh, that's where wrestling that's why fans I are to nowadays. Very few people about wrestling, by the way, for that reason. Yep. Well, I know. Uh, you need to give us what we want, and if you don't, then we're gonna cry on the internet. <laughs> yeah, and then one other, one other reason I wanted to do this too is because you and I. One thing we've always said: it's like I don't care what it says. We're huge Nash fans. I always love Kevin Nash, and I absolutely, think, I think he does not. Uh, I think people just expected more out of him. Like, what, what were you expecting out of him? He was not going to be Daniel Bryan or Kurt Angle. I'm sorry. But this yeah, is what so, he is. Yeah, like, why does of, everyone have to be that? Yeah, multiple. <laughs> but he only has five moves of doom, and four of them are a hair flip. So He admits that. Yeah. So. It's not like he's sitting there putting himself over. I'm great. I'm amazing. You know, I'm screw you for not liking me. He never said any of that. So. <sighs> yeah. And I, I can understand if people don't like his attitude. And, you know, he's he's hard to like sometimes with some of those. If, if you're like if you take wrestling really seriously, he's hard to like because he calls it fake. He says he was only in it for the money. He he says he's not a mark for the belt and all this other stuff. I mean, he's like he's very open and honest about his yet feelings. He, yet he made himself champion when he beat Goldberg. But anyways, <laughs> I know. Well, then he turned around. Well, what did that do for me? Because I jobbed out to Hogan to finger poke a doom. It's like eh, because you're an idiot. I don't know. I mean, a smart idiot or, or a, a rich idiot, but, you know, an idiot nonetheless. Either way, I'm uh, debating. I might be meeting him in a couple of weeks in uh, at a Comic-Con in Stockton. Um, I might go thinking nice. about going. So, yeah, Scott Hall is there one day. He's there the next. I already have Scott Hall's autograph. As you remember, we met him in New Orleans. Yep. So cool oh, well, you, you met him. I didn't. Yeah. Well, you were but, alive with me, weren't you? I feel like you're right there with me. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember that one, I'll say, but. Either way, uh, it's another one of those famous. I went over there while you were in line waiting for Christian stories that I've said on this pod like 27 times. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, Christian Cage, who is in AEW, by the way, now. So he, man, I got to meet him when he was in that sweet spot right after T, right after TNA, but right before AEW, he was you know still in WWE for for a few years and got to sell pictures of himself holding the world's heavyweight title. We are. It's brought to you by. Fubo TV and Fanatics. Links are down in the podcast description, and we'll talk about them more in the upcoming breaks. And just to let you know, if you're listening on the podcast feed, thank you. But please leave a five-star review, subscribe, and tell all your friends about us. Five stars, unlike what Uncle Dave gives Kevin Nash matches. Had to throw that in there. Well, he wasn't but, in the Tokyo Dome, so. Yeah, well, in the Tokyo Dome, he might have got two stars. You know, got to bump it up. But anyway, uh Please subscribe, leave a review, spread the word, and you can also hear us live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on the Unhinged Sports Network. That's unhingedsn.airtime.pro. We're going to hop into our first break. When we come back, we're going to dive into the beginning of 1995 with Big Daddy Cool Diesel. Follow the Main Event Marks at Facebook.com forward slash Main Event Marks Pod, on Twitter at Main Event underscore Marks, and on Instagram at Main Event underscore Marks, and at Main Event Collector. Get all the best podcast swag from the Main Event Marks. Our merch shop offers custom graphics, including the podcast logo, on hats, shirts, masks, greeting cards, and more. There are tons of new designs with more dropping all the time. Just head on over to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash main event marks to grab your podcast merch today and become an official main event mark. That's redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash main event marks. The main event marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Now back to the show. All right, we are back. Let's hop into this, man. The way the way we're going to do this, I pulled out news and notes. I also pulled down notes about his matches and feuds and everything else. I 
I'm hoping you like the flow of this. I hope everybody at home likes the flow of this. Definitely, this one, if you're going to leave a review for any podcast, this would be the one to do it because we want feedback. Do you like it? Do you not yeah, like it? Yeah, because this pod is based on feedback, by the way. So. Yes, I mean, we're literally doing this show because of feedback we got. So if you want your voice heard and you want to hear us cover something, let us know. I, I try to do a lot of research for this one, so we'll see how it goes. Luckily, I don't think I really had to. I think I'm just – I remember this year vividly. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Uh, first thing here, though, getting into January, on the way to the Royal Rumble, starting back in 1994, Bret Hart was feuding with his brother Owen. After Owen was unable to win the title, he helped Bob Backlund win it from Bret at the Survivor Series. Three days after Survivor Series, however, Diesel squashed Backlund in MSG to win the title at a house show. Diesel then agreed to grant a title shot to Bret Hart. Also at Survivor Series 1994, Shawn Michaels and Diesel had an argument after Michaels accidentally kicked Diesel in the face. Although the pair held the WWF Tag Team Championships together, Diesel said that he didn't want to team with Michaels any longer. The titles were vacated, and the WWF held a tournament to determine the new champions. Real quick, I want to point out something ironic. Or Number ah. one, I want to say this. the uh, I think the tag titles were then won by 1-2-3 Kid and Sparky Plug. That's a oh, team. yeah. <laughs> At number two, uh, Diesel had won two titles back-to-back, uh, not even on TV, but at house shows, because they won the tag titles from the Head Shrinkers at a house show. I always thought that was funny as hell. He won two titles back-to-back at house shows. <laughs> Good. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't remember – the I mean they weren't calling themselves this at that point, but I don't remember the two dudes from with attitude being champions in ninety four. Yeah, they like I said, they won them at a house show and I think Diesel had both titles going into SummerSlam ninety four against Razor Ramon. Wow. Yeah. Uh well that's uh He won the IC title on T V though. Where's that? <laughs> well he had a heck of a he had a heck of a finale to his nineteen ninety four, man. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, he held all three titles in '94. I think I have. I don't have to really go back and look. I think that might be a record. Uh, maybe. I, yeah, he I don't won even know. All three titles within like a five month span or so. That's insane. That's yeah. Now they've got like five thousand titles. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, continuing yes, but on. Four brands, though. To be fair, it's not like you know they're all on one brand, like boxing. Like one guy has twenty seven titles and. <laughs> Well, you know, that's all perfectly legitimate, Craig. Gosh. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> Boxing has always been above board, always and forever. All right. <laughs> anyway. Doesn't uh, NASCAR Bob, and all them have like 27 titles too? Uh, yeah, like there's, a new, have... there's like another cup every weekend, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't know what they're like. I know they have cups and whatever that they get, but I, I can't remember if there's like, quote unquote, the big one whatever isn't that but, just daytona uh maybe i that that's probably one of them i know one of them starts their season and i don't remember which one that is but i'd have to ask a, a friend of mine about that <laughs> but anyway uh bob Backlund is already turfed from the world title matches against diesel with jeff jarrett taking his place in the main events and Backlund sent down to the prelims against adam bomb because the matches were sucking and he's hard to work with <laughs> Wow. Adam F and Bomb. So you mean to tell me out of this combo, they're like, look, Bob Backlund and Diesel, like those matches just suck. Bob, it's your fault you're going back to the opener. <laughs> like, uh, wow, okay. And who, um, you, and who do you replace Bob Backlund with? Double F and J. Uh, look, uh, I, I want to point out, by the way, at the time of this recording, Adam Bomb's kind of semi-relevant again in the podcast world because the Major Brothers have been interviewing him on their show, and he's got a new figure coming out from, Ch- I think it's called Cello Toys. It's wow. an Adam um, a Hasbro-style figure, so. Wow. It's kind of funny as of this recording. That's he's kind really, of being talked about again, so. Really effing random. I heard somebody else said they were trying to, uh, in this uh, wrestling group, I mean, of like wrestling podcasters, somebody said they had either recently interviewed him or were working on interviewing him or something like that. So I guess he's making the rounds <laughs> of all freaking people. Brian effing Clark. I think he just got exonerated of like a drug charge or something. I forget what it was, but 
Oh, damn. He was well, busted for something, and apparently they retracted it, I guess. So I don't know the story. Was he caught with chronic? <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, yeah. I don't think that would be anything more than a misdemeanor. So. <laughs> yeah. Depending on the state, well, nothing at all. So. By the way, uh, before we move on from, from this point here, I, I just got to mention again. It's like, you know, to the, the first – uh, kind of nail in this coffin here with this about P- one of the arguments is well Diesel needed better opponents to draw people. Look, Jeff Jarrett's a good wrestler and everything, but who the hell was paying for a house show to see Jeff Jarrett versus Diesel in the main event in early '95? <laughs> I don't think anybody was like oh, <laughs> Diesel versus Bob Backlund. I'm not gonna go see that. Well, and then what and then part they, of '95 was this because January because Jarrett, Jarrett wins the title at Royal Rumble, the Intercontinental title. At Royal Rumble, so I'm was it promoted saying. as champion versus champion? I'm just curious about that. No, this was this was pre-Rumble. I okay. mean, to be fair, they did do some after the Rumble as well, and it was promoted that way. But I don't know. I don't think that many people were like, "Oh, well, now that Jarrett's in the main event, I might buy a ticket." <laughs> Maybe a couple from uh, Tennessee or something. Yeah, uh, Jerry's like, well, uh, you know, well, uh, my son's in the main event, huh? Well, and he's got a belt. Hey, you know. Holy crap. <laughs> Had to get it in. Uh, funny. I just realized Jarrett wrestled like all, all members of the clique, all 395. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he made his rounds, man. Didn't he walk out in 95? Mm, I don't think so. I can't remember when the walkout was because remember him and Road Dog walked out and then Road Dog came back? It might have been late 95. That was when he went to WCW for a while and was doing horseman stuff. Yeah, because he was definitely there in 96, I believe, so... All right. Late 95? Yeah, because uh, he lost the belt, and him and Road Dog... And before, say anyone says, and before anyone says we're not prepared, I was not prepared to think about Jeff Jarrett. Sorry. I don't want to take any right. shots for that crap. <laughs> well, the the thing is, because I remember he, he lost the belt, uh, I want to say to Michaels. Yeah, he lost to Shawn Michaels, I believe it was in G- May. Okay, so... Uh, I, I know he he had lost the belt, and there was a point where him and Road Dog had their bags packed, and they just left and didn't come back. But they got Road Dog to come back and do the the real Double J thing, and then Jarrett went on down south to WCW. So there you and go. Then we, and then we'd come back to WWE, and then go back to WCW, <laughs> and then make TNA, and he got mm-hmm. around. <laughs> and then make GFW, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and be in business with TNA for a minute with GFW. Oh, gosh, yeah, and now he's back in WWE, I think. Ish. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, but here we are at the Royal Rumble. Diesel fought Bret Hart to a draw at 27 minutes, 26 seconds, when Bob Backlund, Shawn Michaels, Jeff Jarrett, the roadie, and Owen Hart all attacked participants after the two wrestlers and the referee were knocked down. Oh, man. Shawn Michaels interfered and broke the champion. talk about overbooking, man. <laughs> Oh, I know. I remember watching this, and I was like, "Mother of God, is there anybody else that's going to come out? What are they going to bury the Undertaker again?" This is again? the second Royal Rumble in a row where they did something like this because I remember the casket match in '94. Yep. Like a hundred guys came out to do this Undertaker. So like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Shawn Michaels interfered and broke up the champion's cover on Hart after Diesel hit the jackknife powerbomb. But referee Earl Hebner ordered the match to continue. Owen Hart then interfered as Brett and Diesel. Uh, or had Diesel in the sharpshooter, he attacked his brother and threw him into an unprotected turnbuckle. But once again, the referee had the match continue. Dave Meltzer only gave er, Dave Meltzer actually gave this match four and a quarter stars, which I think is one of the highest ratings he ever gave to a Diesel match. Uh, after the match, referees and officials ordered the interfering wrestlers backstage, but the heels all returned and were knocked to the floor by Diesel. Moments later, both men shook hands and embraced out of respect. I remember watching that match. It was not a bad match. It was a really good match. I think, I mean, Bret Hart is in a league of his own, but I think he was one of Diesel's. Yeah, just ask him. Wow. But I think he was one of Diesel's best opponents ever. Uh, Him and Shawn Michaels, definitely. I mean, I know, shocker. But I don't don't think it was four and a quarter stars worth of good, (laughs) especially with all that overbooking. Survivor Series match, maybe, yeah. Yeah, the Survivor Series match, yeah, that was... Yeah, that was that was much better than this, but I don't know. Whatever, Uncle Dave is effing weird, man. Maybe uh, maybe that check from Brett cleared. Uh, Stupid. 
<laughs> he's effing stupid. Uh, Diesel, Undertaker, and Vince McMahon all went as WWF representatives to NAPTI con- the, uh, the NAPTI convention so that the company could network with the TV networks. According to those in attendance, Diesel was as uh, was an impressive presence due to his size and his costume, but nobody even knew who he was. WCW, in fact, got the bigger crowds at their booth by using Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage. Eric Bischoff even gave a speech talking about how WCW is the place to be, and WWF is using their cast-off garbage like Diesel as their world champion. Wow. <laughs> That's the yeah. only time anybody could reverse that, man. It's like, hey, remember those guys that used to be big stars that WWF lost? Yeah, we have them now. And you know their world champion? Yeah, he was a jobber for us. Nobody cared about him. <laughs> dude, Oz was the man, dude. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I was thinking more, you know, Vinny Vegas. I mean, that was where the money was. <laughs> he did the snake dude. eyes, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> I like how Shawn Michaels, by the way, pointed out him on WC, WCW Saturday night and was like, we need to get him. Like, is it strictly based on his size? Because what the hell? <laughs> Did he see him as Vinny Vegas or Oz? Do you know? I'm just curious. Uh, so like, which one did he see? He claims he saw Vinny Vegas. Okay, that makes oh, that makes more sense. Right. Yeah. So he, Sean says he saw. They must have watched a lot of WCW Saturday Night, man, because they claim that they also saw Terra Ryzen and were like, ah, oh, that that's our dude. To which I call BS, but you know. <laughs> For those that don't know, uh, Terror Ryzen was Triple H in WCW for only like a minute. And then he was Jean-Paul Levesque. Then he got the hell out of there. Well, now look at him. He kept the same outfit. He just dropped the British accent. <laughs> same gimmick. Was it British same... or French? Uh, well, I guess it was French, yeah. But it was a horrible French accent. Didn't he say something about that on his DVD, too, where he was like, yeah, they want me to do a French accent. I'm like, I don't know any French. I can't do an accent. And they were like, ah, fake it. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. They had the guy with the New York accent doing the or excuse me, the Boston accent doing the uh, the devil worshiper thing. And it just (laughs) sounded weird. (sighs) Anyway, on the February 20th taping of Raw, Shawn Michaels introduced his new bodyguard to replace Big Daddy Cool. Psycho Sid, back from a nearly three-year absence what about from the WWF. <laughs> uh, on the same Raw, by the way, footage was shown of Diesel appearing during the NBA All-Star Weekend with Conan O'Brien, Sultan Peppa, David Justice, Cal Ripken Jr., David Robinson, and several other celebrities. And that's a who's who of, holy crap, that's 90s. <laughs> Conan's the Sultan only one Peppa still would actually be stuff. at WrestleMania that year. I know. That's uh, that was weird. You wouldn't well, know I, that, though, on the network because they edited it out for some reason. So. Yeah, well, you still get to see them in the intro rubbing up on Brett like they're going to molest him. That's right. Yeah. That was effing weird. Uh, Cal Ripken Jr., I mean, if anybody knows anything about baseball, you know him. Uh, David Justice was another big baseball guy, right? He was for the Yankees, yeah, for, and then the A's had him for a minute during the Moneyball season. I want to say he played for the Indians for like a minute. I got to look that up. David Robinson, though, that basketball. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was a Spurs, so naturally I hated him. Uh, was that the general? Uh, Maybe. I think it was his nickname. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, by the way, David Justice, 97 to 2000, he was with the Indians. <laughs> so I, I I knew I recognized that name. That That's another one. The, the, the Indians are just a, a graveyard of, hey, remember that big superstar we once had? <laughs> No, it's usually a guy that wasn't a superstar that turned into a superstar that could have been a superstar you have, but you got rid of him too early. Yeah, right. I think I, was, or, I, think I got it all out. <laughs> or we had them forever. They did nothing, and then they go to another team and then blow up. <laughs> so it was like, oh, so it was just us. Thanks. Ugh, man. Uh, WCW did some aggressive marketing at the Toy Fair, spending big money on advertising with full-color ads and all the journals – The WWF was just an afterthought in Hasbro's display. By contrast, WCW reps were really hitting the foreign markets hard, claiming that, quote, everyone knows the WWF has gone down and WCW is number one because foreign buyers won't know any better. Hasbro figures were dying at this time. When when was it they signed on with Jack Specific? Right right around here, I think. Oh, really? Okay. 
Yeah, because they did because come out with Diesel figures. On, one of the things going on right now is we were just talking about Jeff Jarrett. He's getting his own figure from um, – it's called Zombie Sailor Toys. It's a Hasbro-style mm-hmm. toy. It was canceled, but now it's coming hmm. out. It's, not, it's a Hasbro style, though, and it was canceled. Right. And he's in the attire he's wearing for the most part at this time. So huh. I want to say it got canceled because they got rid of the deal with Hasbro, and the Jackson came through right around now. Yeah, I remember they actually had a diesel figure, so I know it had to have been around because he left in early 96 so uh, or spring of 96, whatever. So it had to have been – you know, around this time. Uh, but uh, plus Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage, by the way, were there for WCW. Go figure. Lines for the Mega Powers were long, while there was minimal interest in Diesel and Brett on the WWF side. Hmm. Jeez. Figured the, the ones with the foreign markets would have loved Brett. I don't. I I don't know why, but he like blew up every whenever they went overseas or something. He was like worshipped like a god. Canadians. <laughs> yeah. They said he had huge drawing power over in, like, Europe, and even Brett talks about that. He's like, yeah, obviously number one was Canada for me, but Europe was always a huge market for my fan base. Yeah, he got some uh, pointers from David Hasselhoff. So. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Uh, in all the mainstream coverage before and after WrestleMania, basically, basically none of it even mentioned Diesel versus Shawn Michaels, by the way. However, most of them did make sure to mention that Hulk Hogan had recently left for WCW. <laughs> yeah, good lord. I don't know how recent that, that was, was around this time. Okay, first of all, it wasn't recent. And second, I know. he didn't leave for WCW. He left and then went there afterwards, like a whole year afterward, I think. Yeah, he, he's so, been out of WWF for a while. Well, yeah, because was King of the Ring – What he did he wrestle a couple matches after King of the Ring, or was that it? Apparently he did on a tour. Okay, yeah. TV. So TV wise, he was the last time I think. Yeah. yeah, so he he would let's just say he was there through the end of June, uh, ninety three. Still, like like to your point, it was almost a damn year before he popped up in WCW. Yeah. So, yeah, I know that that's that's still not real recent though at this time because we're in spring of or well we're entering into spring of uh, ninety five. But uh, we forgot to mention, by the way, not to backtrack too much, but NAPTI. I can't remember what it stands for, but it's something of – It's, it's it that was, music downloading service. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, but NAPTI was uh, a, a big convention for uh, basically TV people. Like they would all go. They would showcase what's coming up in their upcoming seasons. They would uh, – like it, if somebody was trying to get a show picked up, they would shop it around to the different booths and, and – executives and whatever and according to eric bischoff in the 90s it was huge like it was packed out but he said now you know and and they would like rent these huge places to hold the convention in he said now you're lucky you know you could hold the whole thing in like a remote a room at the ramada inn (laughs) yeah everything's digital now so yeah i mean that doesn't surprise me and you know why do you have a tv's not what it what it once was i mean like there are only a couple of shows pulling in like you know huge uh, multi-million ratings, whatever, you know, like to your point, streaming is where everything went. And well, I mean, I don't, I don't really particularly care about Emmys and all that stuff, but when they now have a category in the Emmys for Netflix shows and stuff like that, <laughs> that's, that's a tale to me about TV. <laughs> yep. I always like that, that joke that, uh, that they had on South Park where they just called up Netflix and, and they're like, Hello, you're talking to Netflix. Uh, Netflix, what show can we greenlight for you? <laughs> <sighs> but uh, anyway, we're officially at WrestleMania now. By the way, one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. I mean, is not a this... good look for the world champion, I might add. Yeah, is this is would you categorize this as the worst, or would you just bottom of the categories? It's between this nine and uh, twenty-seven. Nine. Is pretty bad. I think 27 had enough good stuff on it to keep it out of the worst of all time listing. Yeah, this uh, one may be actually the worst. Two. Uh, two is up there, too. Yeah, but I kind of give that one a pass because it was still the early days and still finding its footing. That's true. Yeah. And it was a spectacle, a crappy spectacle, but a spectacle. But at WrestleMania 11, Pamela Anderson was a special guest that was intended to accompany Royal Rumble winner Shawn Michaels to the ring for the main event. 
Instead, Anderson goes, quote, missing, only to accompany Diesel to the ring at the end of the night. Well, not quite the end of the night, but the world title match did not close the show. Uh, but to replace Anderson, I mean, Michaels, why would it? <laughs> Uh, to replace Anderson, Michaels gets not only Psycho Sid, but also Jenny McCarthy to accompany him. Diesel ended up beating Sean in 20 minutes, 37 seconds with a boot to the face and a jackknife powerbomb. Also at ringside, Jonathan Taylor Thomas was the guest timekeeper, and Nicholas Turo was the guest ring announcer. <laughs> this, this, oddly enough, was voted match of the year by the Pro Wrestling Illustrated and was given four stars by Uncle Dave Meltzer. That was a great one. Oh, match. I mean. it, it was really good, but match of the year? Like, we went well, through 95. Can you, can you tell me what else it could have been then? Diesel versus Brett is up there. Uh, is it I better mean, than were, this? Uh, I don't know. It, it. I mean, again, it, you know, it's it's all subjective, obviously, but I don't know if WCW had anything that could compete quality-wise with, with at I'm least I'm sure big there time. was something on. On, on uncensored that was probably up there that can compete because usually they oh, knocked Lord. out of the park with uncensored so oh yeah and that that was the show that you know almost basically went head-to-head with wrestlemania so so you, hey you wanted a really bad show around this time no you get two really bad shows around this time aren't aren't you happy i feel blessed by the wrestling gods by the way, Nicholas Turturro at this time was on NYPD Blue as Dr. James Martinez. So that was a huge show back in the 90s for all you youngins. Uh, He's now known as the guy, Brucey, in the longest show that couldn't kick a football. And, uh, uh, that was yeah. cheating on his wife with, uh, say, transgender people. Yeah, it was just drag. Guys dressed that's in drag. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. W- was it Tracy Morgan was the one? It was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it funnier. That's the only thing I know him from because I was too young to know NYPD Blue. But I think my mom watched it, so that's why I knew who he was. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, if a lot of people back in the '90s watched it, and back then, again, like today, you're inundated with content. If somebody says, "Hey, have you seen such and such show?" There's a at least a 50 percent chance they have not. Back then, it was like, "Hey, have you seen such and sh- such show?" Most people, if it was a big enough show, everybody was watching it. Either way, moving on. On the first Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels went off on Psycho Sid for not helping him beat Diesel. Sid snapped and powerbombed Shawn three times before Diesel ran down to chase Sid off. Uh, this You would not would... know what happened, though, because this all happened during a break. Yeah. That's, that uh... really made me mad when I was a kid. Yeah, it all happened during a break. Just like, well, what's with Diesel's most like biggest moments not being televised? <laughs> Doesn't help the argument that he wasn't a draw. <laughs> yeah, oh, let's have you win every title on a house show. Oh yeah, because you know that's that's a way to get you over. Hey, let's uh, let's have you you know d- start this new feud on a commercial break. You know, because again, that'll get you over. Like, what the hell, man? But uh, this would sideline Shawn Michaels for six weeks, taking him out of an announced rematch with Diesel at the upcoming In Your House event. So, yeah, this uh, this came up. According to Bruce Pritchard, this all happened because they kept trying to uh, – Pat Patterson and Bruce Pritchard apparently kept telling uh, Vince, they're like, he's a baby face. We need to make him a baby face. And Vince put his foot down and said, that little bastard will never be a baby face. And then after WrestleMania, he gets in the limo with them, and he's like, God dang it, guys. Why didn't you tell me we had a baby face on our hands? <laughs> and he said him and Pat looked at each other like, did we take some drugs and forget? He's like, we've been telling you this for months. Like, what the hell? And he said, and Vince acted like, oh, I came up with it on my own. He's a baby face now. And he's like, and, and we couldn't do a slow burn. It's like, nope, he's got to turn tomorrow night. I was like, well, I guess we're going to be up all night rewriting TV. But I think it worked out, out well. I think. <laughs> yeah, right. It all worked out for Sean. And he wouldn't turn heel again until DX. Yep. Yeah, so he was babyface for quite a while. I mean, yes, but did he? I mean, there were people that were not going to boo him. I mean, I know in theory he was a heel, but. He's a heel! Came out of a green spray painted box! No, that's over, dude. It can't be over. It can't be. Uh, you're not automatically over anymore when you come out of a box. Oh. Thanks a lot, Chris Statlander. <laughs> 
No, she's Chris Flatliner now. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, Dr. Death Steve Williams had missed the Tokyo Dome show, and word was that he was back in the U.S. for a family medical situation for of some kind. But then it turned out or turned into a six month suspension and then a one year suspension. And then rumors became that he was fired from all Japan completely and would be shortly jumping to either WWF or New Japan. The WWF is said to be very interested in him as a top heel challenger to Diesel. Spoiler didn't happen. <laughs> They're interested in him a lot in, uh, in, in the 90s. Yeah, it's it's like uh I, I don't know how that match would have been. I mean, it would have been better than him versus Mabel. What the hell is that saying? Yeah, it's not really saying anything. I mean, you've made it clear you're not a Dr. Death fan. No, I never was. I just, I, I never saw it, hmm. sorry. I think he's okay. I, I, I was never like, oh, man, he's awesome. Some of his stuff in Japan was pretty damn good, but that's legit. Ultimately, just him beating the crap out of other people. So I don't know. Here's yeah, boom, one. Boomer sooner, man. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, Diesel was scheduled to defend his title against Bam Bam Bigelow, a member of the Million Dollar Corporation stable, after a confrontation between the two on Action Zone, which I forgot was a thing. Then on Wrestling Challenge, Bigelow was noticeably snubbed by the corporation. A match between Psycho Sid and Diesel was scheduled for In Your House, in which Sid w- could uh, potentially face Diesel for the WWF Championship, depending on whether he retained or lost his title against Bigelow. On Raw, Sid said that he was unhappy about the stipulation, as it meant that if Bigelow won, Sid would not get a shot at the title. Uh, Diesel retained the title, and then the corporation turned on Bigelow, with Tatanka tripping Bigelow as he ran off the ropes, leading to a Diesel win. After the match, Bigelow was insulted by Ted DiBiase and attacked by the corporation. Uh, Diesel came back out to help Bam Bam. In Sid's match with Razor Ramon on on that same uh, Raw, uh, Diesel came to the ring, or I guess this was a later Raw. Either way, Diesel came to the ring, and Sid took off. The following week on Raw, DiBiase revealed that he and Sid had been working together for quite a while, admitting that it was him who told Shawn Michaels to go get or to get a new bodyguard. So to break this down, basically, just because there's a lot to unpack with this, uh, basically, so Bam Bam, like we just talked about, Bam Bam got kicked out of the Million Dollar Corporation, uh, and then... No, remember he said, you can't fire me, I quit. Oh, I don't remember that part, okay. Um, he was very adamant about that. <laughs> okay. You can't fire me, I quit. Well, they cost him his title shot. They got uh, opportunity. God dang it, pal. His championship opportunity. Because, you know, people talk like that in real life. And uh, Sid slipped in there. Now he's going to get the title match against Big Daddy Cool at In Your House. And the million. And, and so Teddy Biasi reveals that it was him all along, Austin. He, uh, he had talked. Sean into getting Sid as his new bodyguard, I guess. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just trying to get all this hammered out here. But uh, continuing on here with the uh, with Raw, Raw continues to smash ratings records, doing its all time high for the Bam Bam versus Diesel title match on April twenty fourth, the three point nine rating or two point twenty eight million homes. Not that just bad. Weird. <laughs> Well, getting a 3.9 rating? No, th- that match was the one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Apparently, they were doing gangbuster numbers around this time, according to this, because it says it continues to smash ratings records. So, And keep in mind, people, at this time, Raw was only one hour long. Now it's effing three hours long. And that's on top of, like, a million other shows that, that WWE does. And I watch them all. What's your point? <laughs> you, do you watch main event? Mm, when it's on. Oh, man. Uh, on house shows leading Did up I to... Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I just... I didn't know anybody watched that. So... On house shows leading up to In Your House, by the way, Diesel repeatedly squashed Sid in matches, usually in a matter of seconds or just over five minutes. You know, I, and look, I know they're house shows. They're not on TV. But if you want to get everybody prepared for this big title match of the next pay-per-view, well, you got to have the champion go out and squash the guy, right? <laughs> Yeah, but who's watching? 
Yeah, well, at like this five time, people there. Yeah, at this time, apparently house shows weren't doing great. So, uh, at the first ever in your house, yes, in your house one, uh, Diesel defeated Psycho Sid with Teddy DiBiase via disqualification at 11:29 when Tataka interfered and broke Diesel's cover after Diesel hit him or hit a jackknife powerbomb. Uncle Dave gave this match three quarters of a star, so the whole thing sucked. After the match, Tataka and DiBiase assaulted Diesel, and Sid attempted the powerbomb, but Bam Bam Bigelow came out and made the save, clearing the heels from the ring. So Diesel, or excuse me, Bam Bam is a full-fledged babyface at this point. And it was really weird just... seeing him as a babyface, because my whole life I had known him as the big bad heel. Right, yeah. And here he would get a new attire. He would come out shooting fire from his freaking wrists. That was weird. And randomly using Lawrence Taylor's WrestleMania theme. <laughs> was was that what Lawrence Taylor came out to? Mm-hmm. Wow. That's so effing strange. Yeah. Because I know his, the beginning of his theme still said Bam Bam, and then it went into some, like, other song. I'm like, this does not fit him at all. I just remember he had this whole, like, he had these things on his wrist that shot fire, and he would come to the ring, and he would do this little, like, pump kick thing, and then put his fists up in the air and shoot fire. <sighs> it's so freaking sell, boring. Sell some, sell some merch, right? Yeah, you got to sell them kids some little fireball shooters. Yeah, what, kid, what, what parent wouldn't want their kid playing with that? Damn straight. But yeah, In Your House won. That was the one. Uh, that's like Conrad said he likes messing with people because somebody asked him, he's like, Oh, what are you watching? He said, in your house. He's like, oh, which one? He said, in your house. Yeah, 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 which one? He was like, just in your house. (laughs) He said there was no tagline. There was no number. It was just in your house. That's all it was. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, they gave away a house on the show. It was, who who is it? Uh, Todd Todd Pettengill and who is it? Stephanie something or other? Stephanie Wyan, yes. Yeah, Stephanie Wyan, yeah. Who got name dropped at the last in your house. They just did uh, for NXT. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, and they gave uh they gave they gave away a house in Florida. I think you had told me at one point they foreclosed upon that house. <laughs> uh I guess according to Pritchard, whoever won it, they didn't want it, so they didn't keep it, so So Because they didn't did want to they, they they just moved to Vegas, I think he said, and they didn't want to move to Florida, so Wow. So did they basically just enter in the contest to get a free house to sell? I guess so and if I and correct me if I'm wrong but I think you had told me at one point it, while this was going on there was a hurricane hitting where that house was sitting yeah it almost destroyed the house <laughs> that's what Bruce <laughs> said but moving on here on the May 15th ep- edition of Raw Teddy Biasi proposed a match at King of the Ring between Diesel and Bam Bam Bigelow versus Sid and Tatanka on the May 22nd edition of Raw ass so- seats right there man <laughs> Hey, I like all four of them guys. I think you do too. But yeah, the hell of, <laughs> at King of the Ring. Yeah. This and keep in mind, this was like the fifth this of was, like this was the, the Mabel King of the Ring, by the way. So <laughs> I know. How do we make this one better? Here's a this. fun game. Here's a fun game. Find the redeeming quality of that show. <laughs> yeah. It, hey, uh, if if I had to pick anything, it would be Savio Vega. And yeah. I. That that tells you right there, and I'm not you know crapping on Savio, but when Savio Vega is the shining light, of, <laughs> but when when Savio Vega is the shining light of the show, something's wrong. All right, he was a good wrestler, but seriously, did anybody ever pay to see him? Asses, like, seats, dude. Savio Vega's on the show. I got to get a ticket now. Look, there might be actually someone or a, a part of Puerto Rico that's actually said those words. So, tread yeah, lightly. I, he, yeah, that's true. Where I can't remember where this King of the Ring was, but I'm gonna assume it's in a place where I think it was was it Philadelphia? Well, that is correct. <laughs> I'll oh, pull your shirt off when you said that. Oh, absolutely. Man, the, yeah, this King of the Ring was just <laughs> bowling shoe ugly. And then on the May twenty second edition of Raw, Shawn Michaels returned from his injury. He defeated King Kong Bundy. In a King of the Ring tournament qualifying match, uh, I I was today years old when I now when I found out that Shawn Michaels ever faced King Kong Bundy. <laughs> if I remember correctly, it was a semi fun match. 
I'd have to check that out. I, I'm, I'm, I've got a perverse like curiosity for this one now. I gotta look that up. But during this time, Diesel suffered a legitimate elbow injury, but was able to compete at King of the Ring. To explain the injury, footage was shown on the May 29th edition of Raw of Sid perform, performing a choke slam and power bomb on Diesel at In Your House One. So I totally remember that, mm-hmm. and I just laugh now because looking back, I was like, man. I was hook, line, and sinker on that one, dude. Yeah, I know. Yeah, cause they were like, oh, here's where it hurt. And it's like all it was was him taking a standard bump where you put your 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 arms hit. Yeah, but the way they showed it, though, I mean, it's oh, yeah. well, know, the, well, the it wasn't cool like thing, out there, like no effing way. Oh, well, yeah, for sure, and especially with his size and everything. You could see it. That's why, I mean, even when I looked back, I was like, is that how he hurt himself? I, like, I, I don't know. Because, yeah, it, I mean – Luckily for that, I mean, that was creative. But if anybody looks, the standard way you're supposed to take a bump, anybody, if somebody gets an elbow injury, you can point point at that and be like, oh, well, look, look at right there. I legitimately tore up my elbow one time t- taking bumps the wrong, the wrong way. So, uh, but I'm yeah. say that was Bruce Prichard. Yeah, probably. Uh, because of Diesel's injury, the storyline was uh, never got any further buildup until the actual pay-per-view. Oh, darn. <laughs> yeah, it was going to be a hot sh- uh, setup, too. Yeah. Well, Diesel actually underwent surgery on May 25th with Dr. James Andrews to remove bone spurs from his elbow. But he'll be back in time for the King of the Ring. And he was, you know, because that's going to save the show, Greg. Oh, I just thank God he's going to be there in time for the great SummerSlam match that we know is coming. <laughs> well, damn straight, man. But at the King of the Ring, Diesel and Bam Bam Bigelow defeated the team of Psycho Sid and Tatanka with Ted DiBiase in their corner in about 17 and a half minutes. When Diesel pinned Tatanka with the jackknife powerbomb after Sid walked out of the match, Uncle Dave gave this match a star and a half. I I can't believe that he he only gave it a star and a half. I mean, I was thinking like four stars here. I don't remember being that bad. I don't remember (laughs) being that good either, but I don't know. I don't want to trash on the idiot until i go see it myself i try not to well, let me watch this. it back myself i try i just i can't play steam matches like this that don't matter i'm sorry this match did not matter like when this i was talking, i was thinking about this show i was like only thinking about the matches that mattered this I think event we're, didn't matter i think we're coming up on one here in a second <laughs> was this the same show where one two three kid was wearing a kimono or something that was wrestlemania 11 i want to say Oh, okay, yeah, I can't, I can't remember. I knew he was turning heel on Razor at some point around here. I think it happens in uh, October. All right. Well, either way, this uh, this whole show was was crap. So nothing really memorable here. But real quick, before we get into uh, more here on on the nineteen the the trip through nineteen ninety five with uh, Big Daddy Cool, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get into more of uh, the goodness that was Diesel in 95. Follow the main event marks at facebook.com forward slash main event marks pod on Twitter at main event underscore marks and on Instagram at main event underscore marks and at main event collector. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. My name is Thomas and what's your name? Uh, I'm Alan. Alan. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. We're brothers. That's right. Yeah. yeah We're the mother, same mother and father. Your room was... Oh, we shared the room. Shared a room. For we right? shared the room. I thought I knew your face. Yeah, we go way way back, mate. Yeah. Yeah. We should do a podcast then. Uh, we have. We do, we do a podcast. We do a podcast. What's it called? The Broadcast. Yeah, that was planned. Yeah, no, yeah. Well. What do we do? Well, we cover all different things in the world of pop culture. We're talking about comic books, we're talking about professional wrestling, and we're talking about movies. Go back and watch classic retro wrestling events, the likes of WWE, WCW, and if you do like that, you can check us out on Apple iTunes, also on Podbean, Anchor, and on Podknife. Also check us out on Twitter, at The Broadcast. That's B R O. Hey, 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 it's all right. Good on you. Yeah. Instagram also at the broadcast podcast. Remember, we don't spell it with a C. We spell it with a K. So you might take it easy. The main event marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Now back to the show. And we're back. And we're back. This, this is post King of the Ring 1995. 
a rematch between Diesel and Sid was scheduled for the second In Your House pay-per-view in the form of a Lumberjack match in the following weeks. <laughs> and it's called In Your House 2, The Lumberjacks. Yep. How did they not have Big Josh on the show? Where was he? <laughs> he was, I think he, yeah, he quit, I think, at this point. I think Doink was being played by Ray Apollo, maybe? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. I, I don't think he was in WWF at this point. That would have been that would have been hilarious. So they're like, hey, for one night only, the return of Big Josh. <laughs> Didn't he uh, have a WrestleMania match with uh, Ricky Steamboat? So he's got that on his credit. <laughs> Wait a minute, Doink the Clown had a WrestleMania match with? I'm pretty sure they wrestled at WrestleMania one or two, one of those. Oh yeah, I think I remember. Yeah. Good lord, yeah, he was just that uh, born. He's got that going for him. And... Yeah, and then he would come back years later as a clown. How about that? <laughs> but, in, but in the following weeks, both rivals chose 14 lumberjacks who would surround the ring during the match. Each got to pick seven, by the way. Coincidentally, like Diesel only picked good guys, and, and DiBiase picked bad guys for Sid. I, it was weird. Yeah, it worked out. It's a weird coincidence, kind of like how the the heels always win the coin toss for the uh, the war games match. It's just it's weird well, I think last works. year the women on NXT the faces won that. So yeah, that was I think that was the first time in history they ever <laughs> gave it to the baby faces. <laughs> or excuse me, they didn't give it to them. They they legitimately won. That was a real coin toss, all above board here. All right, and it's always been the the horsemen are like. <laughs> They they are like uh, a million and O in those coin tosses. I want to go to Vegas with them, man. I know, right? You got the alimony pony by your side. Well, you know, uh, back if anybody remembers at WrestleMania 11, the you try not per- to, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Special Olympian Kathy Huey sang a rendition of America the Beautiful. So she did. Okay, so she did sing that. So she did event. sing America the Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't place uh, the words honestly because. This is not a knock on her. I, I don't listen to like opera, but I feel like she was doing like an operatic voice. And yeah, that's, that's why what it I guess sounded I like. couldn't understand the words. Yeah. And the advertised band that she replaced was Fishbone. Fishbone, yes. Uh, we, we probably got off easy with that. <laughs> yeah, I, they're a fusion of, because I don't know who they are. They're a fusion of ska, punk, funk, metal, reggae, and soul. Mother of God. See, I, I, I've heard of them. So I knew who they were. That's why I was like, yeah, we got off easy. <laughs> yeah, I can't name a single one of their freaking songs. I it just. I What's your favorite Fishbone song? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, that uh, the, the, the one that went full. Uh, it, it went certified aluminum. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But anyway, uh, so they've been doing a lot of work with the Special Olympics uh, in this year. Diesel, Lex Luger, Davy Boy Smith, the One Two Three Kid, Aldo Montoya, Savio Vega, Dink, and others were part of the opening of the Special Olympics in July. <sighs> Listen to that lineup, man. Like it was fine until I hit Aldo Montoya, and I was like, "What the?" And then I said, "Dink." Like, what? Well, I think I can understand. I mean, you know, Special Olympics, and they, I, yeah, I guess trying to tread soft. I don't want people to think I'm being. A- Offensive, but they probably love Dink. Okay, he was, he was a clown. Okay, that's the little clown. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't send Wink and Pink and whatever else. No, they only really booked the ones. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, it, I know. And in your house too, King Mabel, who was a Sid chosen lumberjack, actually attacked Diesel on the outside of the ring. After a Sid powerbomb, Sid high-fived his lumberjacks, giving Diesel plenty of time to recover and kick out at two, thus making Sid look like an idiot. Uh, that's not Diesel, what makes Sid look like an idiot, dude. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Diesel eventually hit a big boot to win. Yes, he hit a big boot to win. Uh, not to get ahead, but uh, there's two pay-per-views in a row where he's not using the jackknife to win. Yeah, More that's that true. In a minute. <laughs> uh, Uncle Dave only gave this a half a star. <laughs> I thought it was way better than the first one. I'm not saying that, you know, it's saying much, but. Didn't I say the first one only got a quarter of a star? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Hey, it so went up. You're a telling whole, me it went up. <laughs> yeah, it went up the whole quarter of a star, man. There you go. We're, you know, we're going up, you know, so that's always a good sign. Could have been a dud. <laughs> uh, on the August 7th Trust edition. Me, it was a dud, but. 
Yeah, yeah, I hated this match, to be honest with you. And, you know, you can see they were setting up Mabel and Diesel. It's just like... Uh, but on the August 7th episode of Monday Night Raw, Diesel faced Sir Mo, which I'm sure just tore the house down. That's, that's a real match. <laughs> uh, yep, unfortunately. Uh, Mabel appeared at ringside, distracting Diesel. Uh, after Diesel won the match, Mabel attacked him with a clothesline and a leg drop. Mabel then attacked Shawn Michaels on the last Raw before SummerSlam. Vince oh, McMahon. man. Yeah. Oh, I think I know what's coming. Vince McMahon interviewed Diesel about his SummerSlam title defense against King Mabel. Halfway through the interview, Davey Boy Smith appeared and suggested that he and Diesel team up for a, uh, for a match against Men on a Mission, which were Mabel and Moe. During the match, however, Smith turned on Diesel and sided with Men on a Mission, lent, uh, leading to a three-on-one assault of Diesel. Uh, I remember this. I was, like, heartbroken, man. Just just Why? <laughs> I know they're setting up his next opponent. To this day, I don't remember. I don't even know the reason for it. Because him and Luger were still the Allied Powers. Yeah, for like another minute. (laughs) No, no, I mean at this point. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Well, my my thing was with them doing this with Davey, they clearly were not looking at Mabel for a long term. They were like, look, we got to get through this. Should they have been? No, but it's just like – you're setting this up. You clearly wanted this to happen, and then at the last second, you're like, nah, it's going to suck. We don't want it. So you're just, like, powering through it. Like, whatever, man. I don't Was know. That fun? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, at SummerSlam, Diesel pinned King Mabel with Sir Mo with a forearm off the top at 9 minutes, 15 seconds. In Lex Luger's f- uh, final WWF appearance, he attacked Mo running him from ringside. This match only drew a half a star from Uncle Dave. Yeah, well, he was generous. So, so he gave this a half a star, and Sid Diesel 1 got a quarter of a star. <laughs> okay. This match sucked so bad. It was just... It was also, the uh, you know, the when Diesel got legit hurt. Not that that would have made it any better, but that didn't oh, help. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's actually the, the – since since he mentioned it here, uh, Diesel is out with an injury from King Mabel's ass. Ma- <laughs> that's a real sentence. <laughs> <laughs> when Mabel did the sit-down splash at SummerSlam, it severely bruised Dave- Diesel's abdomen, and he'll be out until mid-September. Holy cow. How, how do you explain that, man? How do you hey, keep uh, your job when you just damn near cripple the world champion? I know. It's like – Hey, uh, how did he hurt him? Or, well, he, uh, or, or no, he, he, somebody would be like, well, how did the world champion get hurt? Oh, a big fat guy sat on him. <laughs> he crushed him, dude. Yeah. Wait, so you you mean we almost had a revolting blob situation? No, he didn't <laughs> sit on his head at least. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, at least. Good Wait a minute. lord. You just got two Billy Madison references in this podcast. Good job. Damn straight I did. <laughs> but all right. Uh, since uh, we that just. That is correct. Uh, that is correct. Got to take my wife beater off again. Uh, but since we are now. I'm waiting for the pictures. <laughs> since we are now through SummerSlam, we're going to take another quick break here. When we come back, we will dive into our March to In Your House 3 right after this. Follow the Main Event Marks at Facebook.com forward slash Main Event Marks Pod, on Twitter at Main Event underscore Marks, and on Instagram at Main Event underscore Marks, and at Main Event Collector. Fubo TV offers you live sports and TV without the overpriced cable. Fubo TV offers 100 channels, live and on demand, plus over 130 streaming and 4K, and a cloud DVR is included. The Fubo TV app is available on all smart devices, so you can watch what you want, when you want. There are no hidden fees, and you can cancel any time. Cut the cord and sign up for your free trial at Fubo.tv today. Fubo TV is a sponsor of the main event Mark and Unhinged Sports Network. Main event marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Now back to the show. All right, we're back, and it's time for the season premiere of Raw. It's going to feature a new opening in which several wrestlers, including Diesel, battle on the roof of Titan Tower. 
Lex Luger was actually. Can I? Can I just oh. say I loved this opening? Oh yeah, it was sweet. I mean, very well done, uh, very original. I liked it. Raw had some really good openings back in the '90s. Now it's just, I mean, it's you know CGI and everything. It's it's very sleek looking, but you know. Yeah, I mean, back, I mean, just like everything in Hollywood, unfortunately. Yeah, like back then, they, I mean, I remember when the ring ropes were on fire and they were battling it out inside of a freaking warehouse and crap. That was badass. Hell yeah, that was, I love that. You had legit explosions and everything going off all around. It was, I'm like, damn, they, that used to get me pumped for Raw. Now it's like, eh, I mean, it's cool, but yeah, it's it's just a show open. But this, uh, this actually included Lex Luger as one of the wrestlers. And he had to be cut from the opening as he showed up on WCW Monday Nitro before this even aired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I remember Bruce Pritchard going on about this on his podcast. He he said he told Vince, he's like, he won't sign the contract. We don't have him locked down. Let's cut him from the from the shoot. And Vince was like, no, just just put him in there. Does he just just got to have him in the shoot? And he's like, I really don't think it's a good idea. And He's like, just do it. And he did it. And then, boom, he's on Nitro. <laughs> Whatever. I'm sure he got paid well to fake fight on top of a roof. <laughs> but it was announced on TV at this time that all four WWF champions would face each other at the next In Your House event, putting all of the titles on the line. Okay, so this is one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this show, because this was like this was like a big moment. I had never seen it before. It was like... Oh, yeah, the champions this is kind of groundbreaking. Each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember being, like, legit excited for this event when it aired. When you think about it logically, it's a little weird. Um, like, some, like, when you think about just how everything's working, because then you know, at, at some point, because wasn't the rule, like, whoever pinned whatever champion, you get that title? Yeah. Okay, so. I'm thinking Yokozuna's going to pin Diesel and get the title back. That's what I was thinking going into this. Yeah. Well, and but then you also got to think it's like why would Owen just let him win the world title and why Yeah, he, and why and would first? either one of them why I remember why would either one of them go after Michael's IC title? <laughs> so, yeah. The world title's right there, so I know. It's like both of them are going to be gunning for Diesel, but like clearly. But I, it, but I just remember just, watching this and having goosebumps over who's going to win. Yeah, I mean, it like, really could have been any of them. All the crap I gave 95, like, I forget, moments like this, like, legit gave me goosebumps. I feel like TNA repeated this kind of stuff, like, yeah, a I couple of Kurt times. Kurt Angle did it, right? Yeah, I remember there was a time where Kurt Angle, like, won every title. Some, uh, didn't didn't he win it and then Samoa Joe beat him and then held every title? Uh, or vice versa. I don't, remember, I don't remember that part, but I do remember Jay Lethal beating him. For the oh, XW title. And, yeah, that's right. Because oh, yeah, because I think Joe did it, and then Kurt beat Joe for all the belts, and then Kurt lost every. Yeah, title he beat him for all of them except for the world title, which Kurt already had. That's what it was. Yeah. So, all right, that was it. And then, uh, and yeah, and then he lost one by one. Bobby Lashley also did it. So I, I don't know if you remember that. He held all the titles for like a minute. This story. <laughs> Nah. I might have uh, already been checked out of TNA by then. Yeah, I think it was in 2015, I want to say. Maybe 2014, somewhere around there. But this story, I actually wanted to get to this one because it's funny, and I had to throw it in there. It's been talked about on multiple shoot interviews. On a September 15th house show from Montreal, Quebec, Diesel wrestled Jean-Pierre Lafitte to a double countout. This compromise was made because Lafitte who some of you may know as Pierre Carl Roulette or uh, PCO. He said that he can't lose in Montreal and was a bigger star than Diesel in Montreal. Diesel disagreed, pushing for Lafitte to take the jackknife and lose. Lafitte threatened to quit on the spot, saying that he'd rather lose his job than his drawing power in Montreal. The situation got so bad that Vince was called at home to personally negotiate with Lafitte, which resulted in a double countout finish instead <laughs> Good lord. This what is, is it with these life. Canadians? Like, uh, oh, I can't lose here. Like, I don't understand your logic there, dude. And this is in 95. Like, nobody's going to stop going to see the pirate because he lost 
to, to the world champion on a house show. Uh, you just imply that people are going to see the pirates. Yeah, well, that's well, that's why nobody's going to stop going because they didn't go in the first place. Uh, but the show only drew fifty eight hundred people, by the way. Oh after, yeah, he's a real star. Wow, 50, yeah, the whole fifty eight hundred whole people. Well, and what made it worse? Whole fifty eight hundred. Sorry. <laughs> Well, what made this worse was this was after Jacques Rougeau had basically promised a 10,000-person sellout. The next night in Quebec City, Lafitte lost clean to Diesel. Mm. So there you go. Uh, so, you know, Quebec City, whatever, F them. That's down the road. But here in Montreal, no, nah, we got to do things my way. God, it's hard <sighs> to see why he's, he was not a big star with WWE. Yeah. I remember Diesel talking about this where he said they got into an argument and he's like, well, I'm a big I'm a bigger starter here than you. And he was like, F you. You take my finish and you get pinned. And he's like, get paid. Yeah. Right. And he was like, oh, you know, the, the crowd will be, uh, you know, 90, 10 me, you know. And then he's like, uh, nah. he's like, I'm the world champion. You're going to you're going to lose. And of course, you know, Sean, he said Sean was right there stirring the pot, too. And he's like, you're going to just let him not take your favorite. Everybody else is good enough to take the jackknife. Why can't he do it? And then he said they get out there, and the crowd's, like, cheering him. He said he's he's got uh, Lafitte in, in like, a headlock on the on the mat, and he leans in. He's like, sounds about 70-30 me. You want to change that finish? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But uh, I, I just laugh because I don't remember um, many other – uh, countrymen saying, I ain't losing in this country because I'm from here. How many times did Regal lose in in, in uh, Britain? You know? Yeah, How many times has right. Muda and, and uh, Okada lost in Japan? Don't give me that crap. Yeah. Well, it's 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 kind of the – I mean, it's the reverse of this, but it's kind of like the uh, the guys like uh, they said Gordy and uh, Dr. Death, and there were a couple – oh, uh, Dan Spivey was another one. I, and there were a couple others, but they're like, well, we we can't lose these big matches. And I I know they said that was a problem with Vader when he came to WWF. He was like, well, I can't lose these these big marketed matches because you know that'll hurt my drawing power in Japan. And they're like, you don't work in Japan anymore. You work here. Basically, planning to already not be there at some point. Yeah, that's not a good well, look. I know. Well, they said that was one one problem they had with Vader because he was supposed to lose to to Ultimate Warrior clean. And instead, he just left the ring and walked to the back, and they basically told him, they're like, you get out there and you do your job or you're fired. So he went out there and then purposely got counted out and then walked out. And they're like, that's not what we told you to do. And he's like, well, I can't lose to the Ultimate Warrior in a house show match, by the way, because, you know, the publications over in Japan will just grill me. Did they have a deal with Hot Topic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, dude, first of all, it's a house show. Second of all, who cares what the publications over in Japan say? Nobody cares. Nobody cares, bro. Bro, it's Japanese magazines, bro. Nobody cares. You might have had a point on that going off. <laughs> yeah, on that one, yeah. Good grief. But anyway, we're finally here at In Your House 3 triple header. Finally. <laughs> Three championships were on the line. Diesel's WWF World's Heavyweight title. Shawn Michaels' WWF Intercontinental title, and Yokozuna and Owen Hart's World Tag Team titles. If Diesel had been had uh, had been pinned, he would have lost the World Heavyweight title. If Michaels had been pinned, he'd have lost the Intercontinental title. And if either one of the tag champs lost, then, you know, they lose the tag belts. By the way, <laughs> uh, But on the night of the show, the WWF announced that the British Bulldog had to replace Owen Hart in the match as Hart was with his wife at the hospital as she was giving birth to their second child. Near the end of the match, it was revealed that this was just a storyline as Owen Hart rushed to the ring in full wrestling gear and interfered in the match. Moments later, Diesel pinned Owen Hart to win the match and supposedly win the tag team championships. Uncle Dave gave this three stars, and on Monday Night Raw, the team had to relinquish the titles because, quote, Owen was not the legal man. I was so I was so pissed at that, dude. Yeah, I mean, first of all, as let's look at this as as, as you from a, a kid's perspective first, and then to now as a kid watching it live. Like, did you you saw this match live, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. What what did you think about that? Uh, I just I was like, he well, he's technically the champion. He lost, therefore they lost. I was like, he came in, he got involved, therefore he's now part of the match. Yeah, I just thought, like, 
I don't know. Then again, I didn't watch live. I was watching it, you know, in retrospect. So in retrospect, I mean, were you kind of on the same way, same wavelength as me where it's like, what the hell kind of finish is this? Eh, maybe a little bit. I feel I like they good, booked... I thought it was a fun, something original, so I was, you know, there's that. I just feel like they booked themselves into a corner where it's like, we want to put all the titles on the line, but we don't want to have every, like, we yeah. don't want to switch any uh, titles. It's like, how, how do we do this? We promised this match. We have to have it. Oh, I know. We'll give a screwed finish. Like, what? I mean, you could have just had a DQ or something. Like, I, I don't know. But on September 25th, the British Bulldog lost a match to The Undertaker by disqualification as he kept attacking his opponent, which led to Diesel running to the ring and chasing the Bulldog off. Two weeks later, Bulldog pinned Diesel during a six-man tag team match, earning a title shot in the process. I got a title shot and a six-man tag, eh? Hey, See? Hey, whatever. <laughs> uh, but we are now at In Your House 4, the Great White North. By the way, all these... In your houses were named in like retrospect. They didn't have names going into them. <laughs> it was just in your house four, I think. This one uh, was but, definitely the Great White North. I remember the promotion for it. Did, okay. Mm-hmm. So I think was this because I I know the first couple like the Lumberjacks. I don't think they called it that until that after one. Yeah, it was definitely after. Yeah, the third one I can't remember if they actually called it Triple Header going into it. They were calling the match that on during the promotion for the event, but I don't know if they call it the event that. Yeah, I think they just said, ah, it's no longer a tagline. Now it's just the damn name of the show. But either way, uh, Brett joined the commentary team for this match, uh, for the main event match, rather, between Diesel and the British Bulldog. I need to point out, by the way, this is in Canada and he's not on the card. I just laugh at that. Yeah, yeah. Why would you put Bret Hart on the card in Canada, Greg? That's stupid. I don't know. Doing fantasy <laughs> like- here. Yeah, that'd be that'd be like uh, you know put if you went to Japan and you put Shinsuke Nakamura on the card, that would just be stupid and wouldn't make any sense. Can't be having stuff make sense now. Yeah, right. But anyway, uh, it was the main event match between Diesel and British Bulldog, and he was pushing the fact that Brett was next in line for the championship. In the end, Bret Hart ended up ha- uh, hitting the British Bulldog, causing the champion to get disqualified, losing the match, but not the title. So if you're keeping track, that's two screwed finishes in a row on two pay-per-views in matches involving Diesel. Afterwards, Diesel attacked Bret in retaliation. Uncle Dave gave this match one star. I don't remember it being that bad. Nah, I, I would have given it at least two stars, I believe. I'd, I'd have to go back. I know you and I watched this match like yeah. eons ago, but I don't remember. Do you mind before anyone says anything? We did not make this episode with match ratings in mind. So before anyone says, oh, right. you, uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, this I did not go back and watch any of this. I've seen it all in the past. I remember most of it. I don't remember what the hell star ratings I would have given it. So that was not a plan of this. But then on the October 30th edition of Monday Night Raw, the WWF president, Gorilla Monsoon, signed a WWF World Heavyweight Championship match between Diesel and Bret Hart to take place at Survivor Series. Diesel and Hart had faced off for the title two times before. First at the 1994 King of the Ring, Bret defeated, or excuse me, defended against Diesel and lost by DQ when his corner man, Jim Neidhart, interfered to break up a potential pin. Uh, I don't remember that match. Do you? I do. Yeah, it was all swerved to get. Uh, and then um, Anvil joined Owen at the end when he won the King of the Ring. Oh, okay. Was that? A, do you remember if that was a another good match between these two? I oh, it was really it was. good. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to go back and check that one out. Uh, earlier in 1995 at the Royal Rumble, as we mentioned earlier, Diesel made the first pay-per-view defense of his title against Hart, but the match ended in a no contest after Shawn Michaels, Owen Hart, and Bob Backlund all interfered. Uh, with those two matches both ending in disqualifications, Monsoon added a no disqualification stipulation to the rematch. Looking at it from that perspective, that is, I think, pretty cool. Because, yeah. like, hey, within the last two years, you guys only had two matches, but both of them ended in DQs. So this one, there has been, like, that's a nice little touch, I feel. It was. I remember going into this match, I feel like in my heart, I knew Diesel was going to lose. I don't remember why. I just knew he was going to lose. Man, yeah. And and you think a year from now, 
he'd be changing the business. Like, yeah, not even a year, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, we're past couple, the Yeah, a the couple months. Now. Right. Here's a weird little thing. Uh, uh, you, you'll, wow. You'll probably remember the show, but Diesel was on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous in November. I do remember this. I can't remember the dude's name who hosted the show, but I just remember he had like an iconic. Robin Leach. Yeah, and he had like such an iconic voice, too. I remember that. Everybody back in during that time period always had a uh, – uh, always had a, an impression of him. <laughs> that that was back in the day where champagne wishes and caviar dreams. Yeah, that that was it. That was back in the day where people actually wanted to see how the other how the other side lived, and they didn't get angry about it. <laughs> uh, but in their Survivor Series match, Diesel famously threw Bret Hart through the Spanish announce table. Diesel rolled Hart. First time into- ever, I believe. Yeah, I believe so. I, I knew it was famous uh, for something involving that table. Uh, but Diesel rolled Hart into the ring and tried to hit a jackknife powerbomb, but Hart was almost knocked out and collapsed. Diesel tried to pick him up again for the jackknife, but but Hart had been playing possum and rolled Diesel into the small package, getting the pin and winning the championship. An angry Diesel looked towards the camera and shouted, Mother effer! And then he hit two jackknife power bombs on Hart after the match, shouting, "I'm back!" Uncle Dave rated this match three and a half stars. I feel like it was better than three. I, like I don't know. He said their Royal Rumble match was better. I, I'm gonna have to go back and watch them side by side. I, I think this match is way better. That's what I thought too. And yeah, um, it's no DQ, but the other one had a lot of bullcrap interference in it. I did like the next the promo the next night. When he said Big Daddy Cool's back, and then yeah. he said that same guy from Providence at the Royal Rumble, basically saying, oh, I'm a bad guy now, <laughs> without saying it. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, his whole attitude started to change around this time. Uh, the next night on Raw, Diesel cut a promo saying that he refused to apologize for attacking Bret Hart after the match at Survivor Series. He said he slept great last night for the first time in a year, and he actually smiled for the first time in a year. So, he's going heel. And this would be the start of kind of the, the cool well, I, heels. I find it funny he said that I smiled for the first time last night. But a couple of things. Number one, all he did was smile as a face. And number two, um, <laughs> he made it a point to say when I held that title, I was forced to smile. But you just said you smiled the first time. Yeah. I, I, did he mean legit? He should have threw in the word like legitimately smiled or you know, yeah, something. Right. Made it more realistic. But I don't know. Uh, Owen Hart announced an open challenge for In Your House season's beatings coming up, and Diesel accepted. Diesel would go on to get uh, rough with the officials, break the rules, generally act like he didn't care about anyone or anything, and even got into a stare down with The Undertaker one week. I wonder where that's going to go. But closing in on the end here of 1995, at In Your House season's beatings, Owen Hart with Jim Cornette in his corner defeated Diesel via disqualification at about four and a half minutes when Diesel opted not to pin Hart after hitting the power bomb, shoved referee Tim White. That's not wise. No, he why said, just shoved Tim White? Exactly. He said, this is for you, Sean, and he hit a second power bomb on Hart. Uh, moments later, Diesel motioned that he wanted back the WWF world title. Uh, Uncle Dave gave their season's beating match one and a half stars, saying that Owen carried Diesel. Of course he did. I did love that he said, um, you know, he wanted the title back, and he made a whole spiel about how he didn't want the title because it made him miserable. <laughs> it's like I was kind of lost on a lot of these things. Like they were going yeah. back and forth. I was like, "What the hell are you doing, dude? <laughs> what what are you are not? Want? Yeah, it's like, what do you want? Give me what I want." <laughs> During, wow, you brought that back. <laughs> During the main event of the show, it was announced that The Undertaker would challenge for the WWF World Heavyweight title at the 1996 Royal Rumble. After the match, Todd Pittengill conducted a backstage interview with Undertaker and Paul Bearer. Diesel interrupted, upset that he wasn't getting a shot, and he confronted The Undertaker. The closing of the show were the two men standing nose to nose. And again, yeah. I wonder where that's going. <laughs> right. A couple other things here to close the, the year out. The next night on Raw, they conducted the Raw Bowl. Okay. Oh, God, I remember this crap. Is this a tournament or something? No, it was a match, and they were all dressed in football gear. And 
I couldn't even tell you what the rules were off the top of my head. It was so... In December? Uh, yeah. That doesn't even make any sense. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, hey, I wonder if a football team owner pissed off Vince or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that guy Cronky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Diesel pinned King Mabel with Sir Moe in his corner in about eight seconds following a boot to the face. Yeah, because Diesel probably said, I ain't working with that fat ass again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, look, you know, rest in peace, Mabel. I, you know, we're not crapping on the dude. But after the match, Diesel hit the powerbomb on Moe. Well, because he wasn't going to, sure, his crap wasn't going to get Mabel's big ass up there. Uh, Jerry Lawler, Lawler, man, how do you really feel about this guy? <laughs> The dude was like, what, 500 pounds? No way in hell that he was getting him up there. But Jerry Lawler then attempted to interview Diesel, but Diesel walked away or walked on past Lawler, and he selected Ashley the Raw Queen to do the back, the interview backstage. Do you remember this person? I do not. Yeah, I have to go back and watch that. That's weird. Uh, if anybody knows who the hell Ashley the Raw Queen is, um, hit us up on social media, I guess. That's something. But to close out 1995, Diesel wrestled against Bret Hart in a in uh, various cage matches on house shows. Each match ended the same, with Bret escaping over the top before Diesel could exit through the door. And I wonder where that would go. <laughs> but all right, man. Well, that does it for that. I guess we'll take our final break of the podcast. When we come back, we're going to talk about what's to come next week here on the podcast. We'll be right back. Follow the main event marks at facebook.com forward slash main event marks pod on Twitter at main event underscore marks and on Instagram at main event underscore marks and at main event collector. Fanatics offers the world's largest collection of official sports apparel and gear from all the leagues, teams, and players that you love, including the NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, NCAA, NASCAR, soccer, and golf. They even offer esports gear for the gamers among us. You can shop by brand, sport, team, or player. And if you sign up for fan cash, you get exclusive weekly deals. So head on over to Fanatics.com today. Fanatics is a sponsor of the main event Marks and Unhinged Sports Network. Main event marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Now back to the show. And we are back. Obviously, there are no final ratings this time around because we didn't rate a show. We didn't watch a show. We uh, did something new. If you guys are liking what we're uh, – if you're picking up what we're putting down here with this one, definitely let us know. We've got some more planned coming up. Uh, uh, Whoa. Wow. Wow. August uh, August bonus show is actually going to be an event, but it's I, I I'm going to say it's like a non-canon to, to uh, you know quote a, a mutual friend of ours. It's it's basically a non-canon pay-per-view that didn't really advance any storylines in the company that it was in. It was just a quote unquote for fun pay-per-view. So that's how I get away with putting that in bonus. But in September. We are bringing you a, another timepiece bonus episode, and this one we'll have a lot of fun with. It's Vince Russo runs WCW into the ground. Yep. Oh, uh, we're not going to be. And this one, yeah. This one's well, going to be more. We're not going to be laughs. covering. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's something. We're not going to be covering, like, all of Russo's run from beginning to end, but we're going to cover. Can we decide on. The reboot to uh, we had his... talked about what I was thinking was like when he first got there and he wasn't actually seen on camera. He was like the power that the, the powers of be or whatever. Yeah, he was hurt on camera. Yeah, yeah that's, that's better. <laughs> Fun fact, by the way, we'll get into this. I didn't realize uh, until recently I was at his very last show. Yeah, I know you had that that moment where like that moment of clarity where you're like, oh, my gosh, I was at history. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but anyway, so that does it for uh, that. We will be talking about that in September. But up next, to close out July, we have one show left on July 28th. We are covering WC, excuse me, WWE Money in the Bank 2011 for its 10-year anniversary. It's famously – it was advertised as going to be CM Punk's last WWE show, and he wrestled Cena in the main event for the WWE Championship. Good stuff. I'm looking forward to rewatching this one. I – Full disclosure, I just rewatched it. Mm-hmm. 
I won't say anything about it. I don't want to save it for the show, but <laughs> Okay. Yeah. But it was uh, uh it took me back. I forgot. It's a lot better yeah. than you think. When yeah. you see it, you'll be, you'll know what I mean. It's a lot better than what you might remember. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to watching it. And it was in Chicago, so you know, it'll be cool to watch around this time of year. That's very important to note for the uh CM Punk entrance too. Yeah, right. But all right, man, that does it for this. Uh, well, you know, like I said, if you guys want to see more of this or hear more of this, let us know and uh, give us some. And if you guys. don't, let us know. <laughs> yeah, right. If you didn't like it, uh, we'll scrap it. You know, I mean, no skin off my nose. But if you want to hear more of it, you know, we'll definitely have more fun of this. You know, moving forward. But thanks for joining me today, Greg. Mm-hmm. And we will catch you all on Wednesday with WWE Money in the Bank 2011. <laughs>